Okay, so Pi News episode 38, and first up, I've been sent from 52Pi uh, a TPM 2.0 adapter. So it slots onto the GPIO pins of the Pi. You also get this adapter as well, and there are some instructions, but all the instructions are in the wiki. So as you can see from the description here, a TPM is a cryptographic processor present on most commercial PCs and servers. The module is compatible with Windows 10, Internet of Things on Pi 2 and 3. And uh, it also says here, while a typical TPM provides several cryptographic capabilities, three key features are relevant for this post. Establishing a root of trust, secure boot, device identification. So the thing that got me interested in it uh, was basically Windows 11. Uh, Windows 11, if you have a look at this, uh, how to install Windows 11 without a TPM 2.0 chip. So there's workarounds at the moment. And on the Raspberry Pi, because we use the insider version and the WOR team does a great job in making it compatible, we don't currently need a TPM 2.0 chip. We may do in the future on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, so it's uh, it'll be interesting to see if it does stop working and then if I can get it to work with this TPM 2.0 chip uh, because it will be more compatible. I also read that uh, some games were going to require TPM 2.0 in the future as well. Next up, Seed Studio contacted me recently and uh, they said they're going to send me a Compute Module 4 uh, which is embedded in this screen called ReTerminal and it looks really cool. Uh, really, really interested in how it is. I haven't tried out the Compute Module 4 at all yet, uh, so this will be the first one, and so I'll be trying out various different software and things I can run on it. There is already a video on ETA Prime's channel uh, where he goes through it, and uh, so if you want to find out more about it, have a look at that, and in the future I'll have a video and I'll see what I can get running on it. So next up from Facebook was this really cool uh, Lego Outrun arcade machine, and uh, this, as you can see from here, I use Supreme Ultra V1 to put together the Pi side of my LEGO OutRun RK build. And uh, if I just hit play, I'm not going to play the whole video, although it is very short. Uh, it actually moves when you move the controller. So you'll see it tilt in a second. There you go. See it tilts left and right. Very, very cool. Something really unusual. And great news for the Raspberry Pi Foundation. So Raspberry Pi attracts $45 million after lockdowns fuel demand for PCs. So this is from The Telegraph. They're now saying that uh, the foundation is valued around about 500 million. And the good news for this is, I don't know if it's in this story or the other story. Yeah, it must have been this story from TechCrunch. Talks about the Pi Foundation said the financing will be used to expand what is already an ample product line of Pi microprocessors. So more new products in the future. I mean, we didn't doubt that anyway, but uh, it's great to see. And some of the figures quoted in here across both the consumer build-it-yourself PC and industrial Internet of Things sectors, its trading arm ships 7 million plus devices a year at this point. The Pi Foundation also said it's shipping over 42 million Pi-powered PCs to more than 100 countries. And I'll put links to both stories in the description. So back in March, I did a video on Minecraft Pi Edition, uh, and it had been modded to have survival mode in it. It was a more basic version before that mod. Uh, but the one thing it didn't have was sound. And I painstakingly edited in every sound and I also use stereo effects as well so I'll just play a bit of it. Okay so I've been playing it for a bit and uh, there's a creeper outside my door uh, which is scaring the sheep so I'm going to see if I can dispose of him. I left it on earlier on and I got killed by a skeleton so skeletons are in here as well. What they do they blow up after a while don't they? Well there you go. There's another one over there that. Or I might want to shut my door. So I had a bit of fun doing it, and it definitely makes the game seem a lot better. Well, sound has been added. Now, I haven't tried this yet, but you can see here we added sound to Minecraft Pi Edition. Hello, you may know the Minecraft Pi Revival project from this post a few months ago. Our devs did a little work and implemented a sound engine-ish thing that will load sounds into memory and play them depending on what's happening in-game. Our mod is 100% legal and doesn't modify the binary at all. And while sound support is in the mod, sound files themselves must be provided by the user by extracting. And it goes on to say how to do it. So I'll have a look at that. Um, but uh, yeah, Minecraft Pi Edition runs great. Uh, and with the survival element, it was brilliant as well. So if everything works together, that will be superb. From the Raspberry Pi blog, we're sending Raspberry Pi computers to space for the European Astro Pi Challenge. And uh, have a look at the video. I'll just play a little bit of it. 
This isn't just a simulation. This is actually your experiment running on the International Space Station. And more information about the Astro Pi is in the video. Uh, it is a really interesting project and amazing that kids can get to interact with it. So I'll put a link about this in the description. I remember seeing a video about the International Space Station at the London Eye. It was a brilliant film and really gave you a great insight into what the astronauts get up to up there. It's worth checking out this video by Jeff Gearling. He plugged the AMD Radeon RX 6700 XT into a Raspberry Pi. Uh, you can see here with the cabling and everything. And uh, it's again the Compute Module 4 uh, with this board, which obviously allows the GPU to work. But have a look at all the results in there. Very interesting experiment. Great work put into that. Another story from the Raspberry Pi blog, uh, Raspberry Pi displays album art on LED matrix. And I just really like the look of this and I like the way it was reflecting on the wall and everything and how bright all the LEDs are. And even though it's a low resolution image, it's just nice to see the artwork being shown. How does it work? The maker turned to PowerShell a cross-platform task automation solution to create a script available on GitHub that tells the Raspberry Pi which album is playing and sends it the album artwork for display on the LED matrix. So this story from Linux and Open Source World, Vivaldi replaces Firefox as the default browser on Manjaro Linux Cinnamon. Now, uh, I haven't really tried a lot of Vivaldi. I've tried it every now and then, and I often get recommended it. Some people really like the performance of it, but uh, it's uh, a very, very customizable browser. And uh, yeah, so replacing Firefox on that distro. And pretty much last up, uh, Raspberry Pi Pico handheld emulates ZX Spectrum and Commodore 64. So you can see here the little tiny Pico board. You can see the controller there that's part of the board. And there's a VGA out to go into a monitor. Has developed a custom PCB which attaches to a Raspberry Pi Pico and turns it into a ZX Spectrum Commodore 64, complete with in-game pad called MCUME, Multi Computer Machine Emulator is the heart of this build and it is used as the software layer for running the old applications. And on the subject of the ZX Spectrum, uh, you might have noticed this earlier on, this is actually a recreated ZX Spectrum. It's not an original ZX Spectrum. You can see here the buttons are different on the back. I've got a USB cable plugged into my Pi, so I've been using this keyboard today and uh, it also works with Bluetooth as well. Uh, you can't get these unfortunately anymore, the, the project went under. But uh, yeah, unfortunately Sir Clive Sinclair passed away, who was the creator of the ZX Spectrum. So I thought I'd use this uh, just to show it. Uh, and it's a great keyboard uh, for keeping the noise down because it has rubber keys. Here we go, home pioneer Sir Clive Sinclair dies aged 81. And here he is sat in the Sinclair C5, which was uh, an electric vehicle back in 1985, you can see here. And a local vicar in a nearby village where I grew up used to drive one of these around. So I do remember these. Electric bikes now are really strong, but uh, this was uh, early days in electric transportation. And uh, you can see ZX Spectrum there. Uh, I thought I'd see a ZX81 and as a great old picture of him there. And uh, this is an interesting article. Uh, it's worth having a read of as well. But if I type in ZX81, that was the first computer I owned. And you can see a picture of it here. The keyboard was terrible on the ZX81. It actually made the ZX Spectrum seem like it had a really good keyboard. Uh, and we used to game on this. Uh, used to play um, Match Day, Manic Miner, Jetpack, Jet Set Willy, all sorts of great games. And if you want to play them today, uh, I've done some videos uh, because on the Pi, uh, there are a few options. So if I type in... Lee PSP video ZX Spectrum. So I've got a video here showing some uh, ZX Spectrum games, some old and some new ones, because some of these games uh, have been made much, much later on. So the latest one was 2011. So check out that if you want to see ZX Spectrum games and what they were like. But uh, there's also, this is a great site, and it's got all the games uh, in order. So some of the early games, 1982, so graphic adventures like The Hobbit, Horace Goes Skiing, Manic Miner was one of the very early games, but still one of the best ones. So just click on it. I'm now playing Manic Miner on a ZX Spectrum recreated keyboard. Oh, I thought Caps was going to make it jump, but it looks like it's Z. It's most of the buttons on the bottom line are jump. And you've got to get the keys, and uh, then you've got to get all the keys, and then get back to that little square down the bottom uh, before the time runs out. Oh, that wasn't, that wasn't really meant to happen. Still got it though. 
It's a really good game. The puzzle element of it is excellent. Really, really worth a try. But I thought one of the uh, the funniest games to try would be Decathlon because trying to do Decathlon on this keyboard uh, was uh, really not great. So Decathlon, so one for keyboard, redefine keys. I'll say yes, and I'm gonna use Q for left, P for right, and M for jump. Okay, nice and comfortable. Here we are, 100 meters, no false starts. Used to play this for hours. Are we qualified? Oh yeah, 1350 for qualification, no worries at all. Still a great game to play. And one more, do a bit of long jump. So you usually want to get about a 45 degree on most of these games. Or oh, it's a bit over 26 degrees. Is that qualified? So 650 is qualification. Definitely need to hold that button down for longer. Oh, 30, that's got to be it. I was a lot faster that time as well. Yes, qualifies. So uh, if you want to know more about the uh, Kickstarter, and you can see this just runs in a browser, so even on the Pi, it runs fine on the browser. Um, this was uh, a keyboard that you could buy, uh, and it was obviously owed to the Spectrum, uh, by a company called Elite at the time, but it looks like quite a few people didn't get their keyboards. Obviously, I got mine, but I didn't order one of the special ones. Um, they had themed ones and things like that. But uh, it's a great little keyboard, and it does look, I mean, I had a ZX Spectrum, it just looks exactly the same as the Spectrum. Uh, I would have definitely been fooled, apart from looking at the back, obviously. But uh, anyway, I hope this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.